there. Welcome to another episode of Casting Notes from Rose and Kim. This is Kim Swanson, who happens to be wearing the same color as me. I just realized that. I'm just going to say the same thing. I mean, we've got the memo today. Yeah, she's a casting director in Los Angeles. I'm Rose Rosen. I'm a casting director in Florida. Nice to see you. How are you? I'm great, Rose. It's good to see you too, my friend. How are you doing? Can't complain. Who'd listen? <laughs> Right. Well, and let's be honest, complaining doesn't ever solve anything. Right. Like right. You, we keep pushing forward. It's the, you know, it's just the nature of this beast. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But we have such a great guest today. I'm so excited you brought him to the show for us. Oh, yes. Yes. Well, let's get to it. Um, he is Richard Lawson of Richard Lawson Studios. He is also the co-artistic director of the Waco Theater, and, and he's a longtime actor and a good friend, and welcome, Richard. Come on out. Yay! Thank you. <laughs> I think Thank I did that intro right. You know, I'm not you always did. perfect. I, I, I admit to that readily. How are you? Hey. I'm great. I'm really great. Oh, just wonderful. Oh, you know, the, since the pandemic, I have probably tripled my load and projects and things that I'm working on. So this has been a really, I call it an uh, artistic residency. Good Isn't for that you. Amazing? Yeah. yeah. I, I, and this is what I think people who are resilient find, find ways to pivot and, and make things better when things are bad and mm -hmm. right. good for you good for you um yeah, yeah Kim yeah. and I started this for the pandemic and here we're still doing it and uh, I don't know I think we're 20 or so episodes in who knows yeah. beautiful. <laughs> speaking beautiful. of mini longevity you know Richard you have such a, a great career in regards to longevity and consistency and I know you mentioned before that's something you talk about with your students. I would love for you to talk about that. Sure. Um, you know, um, I got into this business March 7th, 1969. So technically, this is my seventh decade of working in show business. The Incredible. 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000, 210, now 220. And uh, so, um, uh, so... This is a marathon, and uh, it's in turn, and I feel just as convicted and having as much fun as the first day that I realized this is what I was put on this earth to do. So this has been, I've been on a 50-year vacation. And so the interesting thing about teaching today is that we live in a world um, first inspired by, by uh, uh, um, MTV, where it's quick edits and things move so fast that there's an expectation on, on the part of young people that they want it right now. And uh, this is not a sprint. And you really have to learn that this is a marathon and you have to learn to survive the marathon and have fun in the process. So it's a, it's a process of learning and gaining tools and getting better in the process. So that's what I teach. And, uh, and the people who listen, you know, are thriving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no question. So it's all about training. What kind of tools do you have in your toolbox? Tell us a little about that. Well, the first thing, the most important thing is, is uh, you can teach someone how to act, but they don't, if they don't understand what they're going to do with it and they don't understand that they have the power to create and it's on them, then they train to get in line and hope that they get invited to somebody's party. Right. Otherwise, you know, that's a particular kind of career. For me, Hollywood is plan B. Plan A is me to be able to envision based upon my dream what it is, what kind of career do I want? What do I see for myself? What do I want to do? Who do I want to work with? Do I want to write? Do I want to create? And I create my career and let Hollywood and bring Hollywood to me and what it is that I create because I then have control. So I start by trying to figure out what people want to do with their, with, what do they see for themselves? And then I can help you get there because it's like having GPS. When you know where you're going, then you know what you need to do to get there. 
if you just learn how to drive on a general basis, if you don't know where you go, you might be on an adventure, and I say good luck to you, and I hope you have a great adventure, rather than having a very clear journey. We're no different than any other business. You want a restaurant? Do you want just a little mom and pop store? Or do you want to franchise that? Do you want to brand it? Do you want it to expand out? So then you need to know what you're, what, you know, the aesthetics of the place, what kind of food, who you're hiring, where your place of business is. That's the same thing that an actor needs to do with their career. So I you're into that. goal setting. Mm-hmm. Big pardon? So you're into goal setting and planning. Oh, definitely. And- definitely. Yeah. And how do you if get I, actors to set those goals? What do you do that, that takes them off of their um, butt, if you will? To, to so get- I created this technology that is called um, the Pathfinder. And, um, and, and this whole thing is, is in terms of looking at why do I want this? So if I'm driven by my purpose and I understand what my purpose is, like why am I in this business? Is it a desire? Or is it something that I can't live without? So the fact that I, I'm, I'm clear about what is driving me in this business, then with that, that sort of Haley's Comet, that energy, I can look in terms of where I want to go with it. So therefore, I can, I can understand what my dream is. I can understand what my postulates are. What do I put out there in the universe? What am I inventing? What are the goals? What are the principles? What are the policies that I need to be in place? What is, what are the, what's the administration plan? How do I administrate this so that every day I'm checking off something towards that goal? But what are my assets and liabilities? And then what are my targets? And then how, I'm in, how am I going to celebrate along the way? So it's a pretty specific uh, structure in terms of creating this blueprint, mm-hmm. this business plan for your career. And, and, and then I give help people with the tools to be able to do that. I put a camera in people's hands and I teach them how to become filmmakers, not to become the next Quentin Tarantino or Spike Lee, but just so that they learn to understand the business from the standpoint of what they're going to do. They're going to be on film. If I know how to edit, it makes me a better actor. If I produce, then I'll never be late to anything again. When you produce something and don't, your people don't show up, time is money. And you run out of light, you, run, you only have that location for five hours and you, know, and you can't get it done, you, you gain a respect for the craft. You gain a respect for all the parts of it. Plus it puts you in a position to create your own evidence, your own product. I really? love that Isn't so that much. Great? Good stuff. I love the yeah. business of acting. You're right. You can really it's a, people how to act and they should be training towards that but boy if they don't get that business aspect down they'll never be successful you know, right my mentor was milton castella i don't know if you've heard of him but at one time he was considered the pre uh, he was arguably the best coach in the business after lee strasberg died and the list of actors i mean hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of act famous actors george clooney michelle pfeiffer patrick swayze giovanni rabisi uh, Jenna Elfman, Doris, uh, on and on and on, Jim Carrey, on and on. And I was his protege and his main teacher. So I taught a lot of those people. And it was always curious to me why the guy sitting next to George Clooney, who was a better actor at the time, you don't know who he is. I have no idea what happened to him. But George had a vision for his career. Mm-hmm. And today he's a director, he's a writer, he's an actor, he's an entrepreneur. He's a businessman. Yeah. He has created this industry for himself, but he saw that early on where the other guy was just a good actor. He, had, he was like a balloon. You, you fill it with helium and it'll fly and it's an interesting flight, but it, you don't know where it's going to wind up. Mm-hmm. Whereas with a vision, you are specifically targeting and you are in, headed in a direction. Backward thinking with forward motion. Now, it doesn't mean that you're not going to have things aren't changed. You won't have obstacles, challenges. But with GPS, it gets you around the challenges. You have to go over it, around it. You have to go back to go around, whatever it is. But the purpose never changes. So your, the 
chances of you achieving it exponentially are higher rather than just having these moments of euphoric experience that doesn't wind up anywhere. Right. No, that's, that's brilliant. I love, and I love the imagery that you've given our viewers as well, because I do think that helps a lot. Um, and I, it's, you're so spot on from a casting standpoint, when you're talking about stick a camera in the hand, let's use a little bit and see the importance of being on time and being prepared. And, and, you know, we are constantly telling that to actors, but I think that, you know, they need that, um, that practical experience for it to really become embedded. And I think that that's really key. So I love that. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Some level. I teach, I teach them how to write because, wow. and I teach them the structure, structure of writing. Um, um, you know, we follow a friend of mine who's an incredible teacher and a writer and a producer. He produced, um, uh, uh, um, God, I can't think of it right now. Um, uh, but anyway, he, he wrote a book called My Story Can Beat Up Your Story and also um, a, a program, a software called uh, Contour. And what he teaches is the fact that he teaches the structure of writing so that ultimately when an actor knows the responsibility of the character, like who is your character? Is he, uh, is he the protagonist the antagonist is he the stakes character is he a deflector is he a, a believer a doubter uh, a supporter um, you know so that you understand what your character's responsibility is in the story then you can better fill that now example is like john goodman john goodman is the ultimate believer so if you see him in these films he's always cast as that guy who's supporting the protagonist if you look at uh, um, the Denzel movie about airplane flight, he was his friend. He was so strongly advocating for his friend that you understand what his role was in the movie. Mm -hmm. So that if an actor understands what their role is, not that they just got a job, you don't learn the lines. Why is, why are, why is this character in this movie? Then you can better play that part because you can give the significance of the evaluation of whatever it is your job. And so that's part of the teaching so that, so that again, when it comes back to brand, when somebody walks in your door and you're casting and you see that photograph and you say, oh, this girl is a great cop. She's perfect for the cop. She comes in and she looks like her photograph and she has trained because she has identified that that is one of her strong suits. So when she walks in there, she knows how to be the cop. Like Dennis Franz was the ultimate cop. He was a cop in everything. I played yeah. with Dennis in several, in two different movies. And he is that cop, that guy, that loyal, that guy that is there with a purpose. And he understood the role and he made a whole career out of being cop. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know. And there's nothing wrong with that. Not a thing. Well, gosh, yeah. you are such a great guest, Richard, and so oh, many nuggets of gold. I just, I just adore you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much thank for you. being on our show today. Absolutely. So, thanks so much, and and we'll drop li Richard's links, and you can follow, like, and subscribe our channel, and tune into Richard, and come back and see us again. Thanks, everyone. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be happy to. Thank thanks, you. Richard.